Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 8 which is all about discovery and occurrence of elements. This will be the second quarter topic, week 4 and day 2. And this lesson is under the Matata curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to First is to identify the different subsystems of the earth and the phases of matter present in each The second one is to apply the knowledge of element properties to differentiate between metals and non-metals And the third one is to appreciate the diversity and abundance of elements found in the natural environment and human body by answering the activity number one. For the explicitation, the students know the key terms to be used in the discussion and ask the students to identify the subsystems of the earth. What are the earth systems? So earth made up of four main systems, the geosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. Each system plays a crucial role in how our planet works. Let's explore the systems and see how they interact with each other. By learning about the system and how they interact, you can better understand the complex and fascinating world we live in. Enjoy exploring and and discovering the amazing connection in earth systems. The first earth system is the geosphere. So the geosphere is the part of the earth that includes all the rocks, minerals, landforms, and the ground beneath our feet. It includes mountains, valleys, and all types of soil. Think of the geosphere as a solid, non-living part of the earth. Another earth system is the hydrosphere. So the hydrosphere includes all the water on earth. This means the oceans, lakes, rivers, streams, glaciers, and even the water underground. So water in the hydrosphere can be in different forms, such as liquid like in the rivers, solid like ice in glaciers, or gas like water vapor in the air. Another Earth system is the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is the layer of gases surrounding the Earth. It is what we breathe and what protects us from the sun's harmful rays. The atmosphere contains different gases including oxygen, nitrogen, and water vapor. Another Earth system is the biosphere. So the biosphere is made up of parts of earth where life exists so that is the all ecosystems the biosphere extends from the deepest root system of trees to the dark environments of ocean trenches to lush rainforest high mountain tops and transition zones like this one where ocean and terrestrial ecosystems meet for the work example, tell the students to identify which element is naturally occurring in each subsystem and take note that multiple elements could be present in a subsystem. And for the part 2 of work example, elements could either be metal or non-metal and this classification may hint at whether an element will be abundant in a specific subsystems of the earth. So how do we differentiate metal from non-metal? So metal has good conductor of heat and electricity, while non-metal mostly insulators. Metal has lustros, while non-metal do not exhibit. Metal is malleable and ductile, while non-metal is brittle. So for the metal, it has high tensile strength, whereas the non-metal, it has low tensile strength. For metals, it has high melting points, whereas non-metal has low melting points. And for metal, it has high densities, while non-metal has low densities. 
most of the metals are solid in form except the mercury. As such, most of them are found in the geospheres. So metals are also mixed in water in the form of charged particles such as ions. True, there is a variety of possible forms of nonmetal in the environment. They are primarily found in gas forms such as noble gases like helium, neon, and argon and halogens such as fluorine and chlorine. Nonmetals could also be found in our geosphere as they could be in the solid forms such as sulfur, carbon, and iodine. Part three of the work example is to accomplish the activity number one. Then elements are also abundant within the living organism. So metal can be found in our body in the form of charged particles as they partake in our metabolisms. Most nonmetals constitute the structure of our body, such as carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which are building blocks for substances within our body. For the instruction, read the material, what are the elements in the human body, with the link provided. Afterwards, fill in the table below with the information you get from the article. Afterwards, the students will answer the following guide questions. For the first question, what is the most interesting element and compound you find in this article and why? And for the second question, what is the most abundant element in the body? For the work example, another part of the work example is to accomplish activity number two. Then see the learning activity sheet and then the students will accomplish the elemental story. So for the objectives at the end of the activity, the learners are expected to A is to appropriately values of the discovery of the elements and B is to identify the use of the discovered elements under prior handling. For the instructions, the class will group into five groups. This is a flexible depending on the class population and each group will have an element. So for group 1, gold, group 2, phosphorus, group 3, arsenic, group 4, polonium, and group 5, technetium. For the instruction, each group will first research the assigned elements and taking note of the following. What was the story behind the discovery of the element? What was the purpose of discovering the element? Is the element naturally abundant in our environment? What were the advantages and disadvantages of the use of discovered element? And what attitude do you find valuable in discovering the assigned elements? Once done, students will prepare a 5-minute drama presentation showcasing their answer to the listed questions and present it to the class. Thank you.